the studies about a seminib in patients with T359 mutation. And uh, uh, I'll first remind you that a seminib uh, is, a, is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, but it has a novel mechanism of action. Is what we, we call a STAMP uh, inhibitor. Uh, it's a specific targeting the ABL um, meristoil pocket. So this is a, a pocket, uh, the, this meristoil site serves as an autoregulator of the activity of ABLE. When ABLE binds to BCR, that autoregulation is lost and a simony restores that ability to inhibit the uh, kinase uh, activity. Um, it's a completely different binding site from all of the other TKIs, which makes it important because it's not affected then by the usual mutations that we uh, see affect the other TKIs. And that includes, of course, the T359, which is why we wanted to test this in the clinic. Uh, of course, in vitro, we had seen that. This is um, a, a, an arm of a larger study where patients also without T359 were investigated and combinations, et cetera. But here we're focusing specifically on the patients with the T359. One other thing that I will mention in terms of the of the um, of the design, you know, it was part of the phase one uh, study. Uh, but here we're focusing on patients that received the actual dose that was found to be effective for the T359. For this study, we, we included the patients, adult patients only in chronic or in accelerated phase, uh, and they had to have a T359 mutation confirmed in a central laboratory. Um, and they should have received a, a prior TKI. And uh, very importantly, the dose that was used uh, here for, these, uh, for this study was 200 milligrams twice a day. Uh, this is a higher dose than what is used uh, for uh, other studies. Um, and in, in patients without this mutation, it's 40 milligrams twice a day. So this is a higher dose. Now in the phase one study, it was found to be safe at doses even higher than that. So we don't have, uh, we didn't have concerns going into this uh, study, uh, but it is important to recognize that, uh, that difference. The, the drug is given orally and it was continued indefinitely uh, until progression or, or uh, intolerance. So we, we treated 52 patients. Um, the their median age was in their mid 50s. And uh, of course, by definition, everybody had the T359. A few patients, just a handful of them had additional mutations uh, besides the T359, uh, but most of them had the, uh, the, the T359 uh, alone. Uh, most of the patients had more than 1% transcripts at the start of the therapy. There was a few patients that had um, less than 1%, but all of them had more than 0.1%. So again, um, these were uh, 52 patients. And uh, um, importantly, some of these patients had received uh, ponatinib already, which is the only other drug that's available uh, today that, that works against T359. So 31 of these patients had received prior ponatinib, so more than, more than half. So the you know if the overall uh, MMR rate was forty seven percent, it was somewhat better for the patients who had not been previously treated with ponatinib uh, than in the patients who had received prior ponatinib. So if we take the twenty four month uh, excuse me the twenty four week uh, mark, uh, the the response rate was fifty seven point eight for those who had not received prior ponatinib, uh, and twenty nine percent twenty eight point six for the patients with prior ponatinib. So a respectable rate, very very good, uh, but certainly lower than if they had not been uh, treated with ponatinib. Uh, and importantly, we're also seeing deeper responses. We are seeing MR4 in 26.5% of the patients, MR4.5 in 20% of the patients. Um, and, and, and of course, the treatment continues for the majority of patients. Two thirds of the patients continue in therapy. So, so it is possible that these rates will continue to uh, improve over time. And again, there's a little bit of a difference uh, between pernatinib treated and pernatinib uh, uh, naive uh, patients. Um, overall, the treatment had been very well tolerated. Uh, very few uh, uh, adverse events that we saw in this uh, in this study, grade three or, or, or four. Uh, perhaps the most uh, common ones were 
uh, elevation of lipase. So it was about 15% of patients who had this was usually transient, very manageable with uh, 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 brief treatment interruptions and those adjustments. And then thrombocytopenia was the only uh, other grade three or four that that uh, that reaches more than 10%. Um, and uh, th there were a, a few patients that had some arterial occlusive events. Um, there were there were three patients that had uh, such events. Uh, one had a, a cerebrovascular event, um, uh, and uh, they, uh, another patient had both an ischemic stroke and a cerebral ischemia, and then a third patient had that peripheral vascular disorder. So these these events had happened. Now these are being patients that have been heavily pretreated, but so we need to keep an eye on this. Um, but but those are the results that we had on this study. Well, I, I think these results uh, show uh, a very uh, active drug in this uh, in this context. Uh, we uh, we see a, a very high response rate, uh, certainly in ponatinib naive patients, but uh, encouragingly even in ponatinib uh, treated patients, um, and and with a toxicity profile that so far, and granted, the follow up is is uh, still relatively short, uh, but the toxicity profile seems to be uh, very very acceptable. Uh, so I think this promises to be uh, um, a, a very good drug uh, to our, our, uh, our armamentarium, uh, and particularly when we consider that we have only one drug available for T359. So, you know, the drug is not yet uh, approved. Uh, we hope that the drug will be approved uh, in the near future, uh, but, but, but it'll be a very welcome addition. You know, the, the one thing that I'll conclude with is just to, to emphasize that this is a, a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, but it is one with a completely different mechanism of action. So even though we have a lot of tyrosine kinase inhibitors, we still have some patients we need. And having a, a drug, that, a first in class of what we call the STAMP inhibitors, um, is very valuable when we consider the, the, those patients that go from one inhibitor to another and, and have no response. And even more for patients with T359 where where we just have one drug and 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 uh, uh, some patients end up having to change either because of efficacy or because of safety. So 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 this is a, a completely novel agent uh, that is very very welcome uh, in the clinic. Mm -hmm.